Hello traders, Douglas here. Today I'm gonna to go over how to make the TTW Trade Finder more accurate and to cut down on what people would label as false signals, okay? Now the first thing that we're gonna cover is just a basic setting that's been around for a long time and then I'm gonna go over a new feature that has recently been released that cuts down on these quote unquote false signals even more. Now the first thing to remember is that when you're working with any indicator, all it's doing is measuring what we've set it to measure, okay? And then it gives you a signal once that measurement comes into line. So, you know, if you're, uh, a basic thing would be like, if I wanna detect a trade that happens with 100 contracts, okay? Then it would show you a signal every time a trade happened that contained 100 contracts, okay? So just because the market doesn't move the way you want it to afterwards does not make something a false signal, all right? It gave you the measurement within the parameters that you set. Okay, now what happens afterwards is up to the market gods, but hopefully what we're doing is measuring something that puts us in line with a probability to win a trade, right? So it puts us on the right side more often than not, gives us some sort of information that we can use to then make more accurate trades. That's the proper use of an indicator, okay? Nothing's gonna tell you trade here, make money, trade here, make money, never lose. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, uh, if you look at the chart right now, I picked a trending day on purpose um, because that's gonna come into play on the uh, second set of, of, of settings. But let's do the basic one. So you see how many uh, squares are up here. So these are the market volume stop signals. This is telling you, um, it's trying to measure basically potential exhaustion areas where there's sort of an imbalance in what happens between the bid and the ask on, on the orders. And I don't know their secret sauce exactly for how they're measuring it and what they're measuring. Of course, they're not gonna just give that away, but um, to dumb it down, we're looking for sort of an exhaustion point where the market has to retreat at least a little bit and often it uh, completely changes course and uh, changes trend into a new direction. Okay, so an example being when, um, you know, price is coming down here and then it hits this signal and then pulls back and then hits these signals and then starts its major trend of the day. Okay, but then there's all of these other ones, right? So the first thing that you want to do is make sure that uh, whatever your market you're trading, you need to adjust uh, the signal level to give you a proper setting for the market. So if you're trading like NQ or RTY, uh, those are much thinner markets, much less volume. And so this uh, this level might be like 100, for example, on like the RTY. Uh, if you set it at a thousand, you might not ever get a signal, okay? So, and I had purposely set the ES here at 500 because I knew that'd be way too low. So we set it to a thousand. And if you join the TTW Discord, uh, they have example settings um, of what other people are kind of using, sort of the ideal uh, settings in their mind for the different markets. And uh, so you can go to the Discord and look all those up. I don't have that list here for you. So, oh, all of a sudden things are looking a little bit easier to trade with, okay? So, you know, we start the day, we're heading into a downtrend and then boop, we pop up, we hit that market volume stop and away she goes. But what about all these white squares, okay? All right, so that's the new uh, feature that they've come out with here and it just cleans up the chart a little bit, okay? Cleans it up. So pullback duration in minutes, this says this hides consecutive signals if they occurred within less than the pullback duration minutes and if price move less than the pullback change in ticks, which is here. Um, simplified, what that means is, is that it's eliminating any signals that happens within a certain period of time, being two minutes that we've set here, and within a certain amount of ticks, we'll make it 10 ticks that we're setting here. And we'll repopulate this. Okay, and now we've cleaned it up even more. So a lot less uh, eye strain and a lot less decisions. 
Um, so to go over that one more time, why well, you would see another square here, another square here, another square here. Well, it was giving you uh, the signals within the parameters that were set, but now with the new settings, you can say, uh, well, I don't want any squares to happen within two minutes of a previous square or within 10 ticks of a previous square. So I want the market to have moved at least a little bit and for a little bit of time before it starts giving me more signals. And the reason why we do that is in a strong downtrend or strong uptrend, um, if there's a lot of volume going on, it's just going to pop, 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 pop signals all the way up. And it's just, there's just too many of them. And then your brain gets thinking, and then you might pull the trigger when you shouldn't pull the trigger and all that kind of stuff. So just um, to let you know how this day went, um, you know, it was down from the very beginning, you know, we're underneath the VWAP the whole time and you don't need these lines to know that we're going down. Now here's that 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock, there's that signal there, you know, and that's when it really started tanking. So the question would be, you say, you know, for some critics or whatever, oh, these are false signals. Well, is it though? I mean, how confident are you going long when since before you were awake, all it's done is dropped? You know, at that point, it might be your own fault. <laughs> so, but we've all been there. We've all made the mistake and we've all gone against the trend and gotten bit. All right. So um, it happens to the best of us. But you, you, I hope you see what I'm saying here about uh, how to properly use an indicator. And uh, so that makes the uh, trade finder just a little bit, uh, a little bit easier, a little bit easier on the eyes, a little bit easier to trade with. And honestly, uh, one of the cool things about this is it does cut down a lot of decisions. So you can kind of sit on your hands and wait and actually take the time to evaluate the market. You're not like trying to get in somewhere in here. Um, for whatever reason, because you saw a candle bar do something or you're getting antsy because you haven't traded in a while and you forgot that you're not here to trade. You're here to make money. You know, those kind of things. We all do it. It's all uh, it's all just mind games with us. Well, um, if you were just patient, you would have had to wait maybe all the way till 10 o'clock to take that trade. But if you sat on your hands, even in this downtrend where you think I'm going to miss everything, you know, oh man, it's going down, down, down. I don't have any good signals. Don't have any good signals. Uh, but then you hit that one and then, you know, away she goes. So um, if you were able, even through here, I mean, there's no reason to sell through that whole big move there. I mean, that on its own, 42, yep almost a 10 point move right there. And if you go from the very top, it probably is a 10 point move um, just right there. So, I mean, that could be your whole day right there. And then if, of course, if you held through it or if you just went with momentum, you know what I'm saying? You can sit on your hands and just take the one trade and that's all you need instead of trying to take multiple trades throughout the day and fry your brain. And then you're up and you're down and you're up and you're down. Uh, and then you get eaten up by commissions and all that. Okay. So uh, that's it for the day. Hope that was helpful. Thank you guys.